All right, so for this experiment, you just need to get some watercolor paper. It doesn't need to be any special kind. And then you just need to get some standing water on top of it. it just needs to be soaked, like a lot of, just a whole bunch of water on top of it, okay? All around it even is better. Just downright soaked paper. I did try just having it on a pan and dribbling water on top of it, but even better than that, I had a tub of water left over from a previous video I did. And before draining it out, I tried just dropping these pieces of paper into it and the paper mostly floats. Um, and so I would get so that there was some water on top of the paper and then I would take a brush and when I use black ink, I used India ink. And I would just kind of dribble and swirl some of the ink into the wet spots on the paper. Now you can't really do this part wrong because it's kind of freestyle. You, It does look really cool while you're doing it, the way the ink swirls around in the water. Uh, but whatever you do here, you don't have really a whole lot of control over because whatever I did, I, I did it and then I went to sleep and then sometime the next day, I would look at it again and some of the ink would have seeped into the paper, but also some of the paper, you know how you, you do watercolor, the paper buckles and warps a little bit. Somehow that would happen and the paper would still be floating on top of the water. And even though there's paper in the water, some of it will still have dried out somehow somehow there would be dry paper floating on top of water. I don't know, it happens. And so the ink forms cool, cool warped patterns on the paper, partly by nature and the way it dries up, and partly by the way you swirled it around on there earlier. So um, over, over like a week or so, I made a few different experiments here and a few different pieces of paper. Eventually, I started experimenting with uh, some fountain pen inks in a few different colors, adding them on top of the indie ink I had been. These are kind of these are kind of ink washes, I suppose. You don't really need a bucket this deep, all right. You don't really need a bucket this deep, a tub, whatever this was. This is actually this is actually a drawer from a, from like a plastic dresser, a plastic set of drawers I used to have some like pairs of pants in. Um, Anyways, what you don't want to do, be careful not to leave the paper in there for like two days. One day is perfect. You might not even have to do it for one day. Play it by ear, experiment, do what you want. But after like two days, the bottom of the paper starts getting a little slimy in my experience. And it's just a little gross. It's fine after it dries out, but no one likes the bottom of their paper to be slimy. But yeah, you can experiment with trying out different color combinations, whatever. Just whatever ink you have sitting around. Try splotching it on there, see what happens when it dries, has you swirl around, layering, all this, whatever, you know, s s whatever you have, splash, splish, put it on there, whatever. Anyways, after all this was done, I, f I kind of sheafed through them and found the one that I liked the most. It was the most colorful and detailed. There were cool textures on there, probably easier to see in real life. And then I grabbed a white paint pen, a Posca pen, and just started doodling away. Uh, these Posca pens are pretty good for drawing on, so on top of this sort of thing. And there's probably a, all sorts of different ways you can go drawing with this. Uh, it probably also would have looked pretty cool just with like a regular ink pen. And you could probably also continue drawing with uh, regular ink washes or watercolors even on top of this. I think could look really cool. You can really go in any direction you want with this sort of thing. People do all sorts of cool stuff with ink washes. So uh, your, your mind is, is the only thing holding you back. And maybe, maybe a little bit the size of the paper, unless you want to like staple other pieces of paper together. So maybe just again your mind and how many staples you have. If I was going to do this again in the future, I probably wouldn't use such a big deep tub of water. That was a little bit overkill. Wasn't necessarily, I only used it because I had it full already and uh, I don't have like a hose or anything to fill it with. I, I filled that with like a, a pitcher, it took a bunch of fills. I would probably just use like a, like a baking pan, something just big enough for a piece of paper and deep enough so that you could have water both under it and over it and you could push it down in a little bit and dunk it. Uh, it I don't know, it's really, it's really kind of soothing and uh, there's some other word, not visceral. Hmm, uh, cathartic maybe? But honestly, you mess around with this stuff enough, you, I don't think you even need the second step of the video. 
I mean, where I'm drawing on it, you can, I think you can build up the layers or even not do any layers. <laughs> Look, art, it doesn't, you don't have to follow these steps. You do you, I'll do me. P sometimes people send me these, you know, things like, Peter, is this art? Is it, is that art? Peter, can you define art? It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Art isn't something that needs to be defined in order for you to do it or enjoy making things. It's just, it's, it seems totally unnecessary to me. Cool. Anyways, y'all take it easy. See you in the next video. Have a good day. Bye. Goodbye.